What is up YouTubers, gamers and hobbyists? Welcome to On The Bench for Pete, the series that you put on in the background whilst you hobby your paint along with me. And yeah, if you know the drill, you know you know what to expect. But if you don't, like I say, it's a, it's a background video. Visually, nothing exciting on just me painting usually. Although in the near future, it's gonna be building. I'll talk more about that later. Uh, just while you get your stuff done, it's, it's something to, you know, pass by the time as, as you do that. Now, I'm looking at my models here, uh, thinking, what stage am I at? Because it's been about a week since I last uh, was here. There is a significant reduction in models on my bench. Now, there are literally one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten models on my bench. Not including Dave, because he's a permanent resident. But they're there, once they're gone, we're on to the Imperial Night, which I've dug out, and getting ready getting ready to prep for that. Yeah, sorry, I had a cough there. Hopefully I've edited that out. Ooh, nothing worse. So, yeah, I've got, I've got a few things to talk about, because, yeah, you know, I've had a bit of uh, a strange week, really. Strange, strange week. And um, yeah, but we'll talk about we'll talk about that tomorrow. Of course, the, the day of recording this tomorrow, I've got my bird interview for the company I like to apply for. Um, and yes, I am nervous about it. I'm gonna give it my all again, once again. Will it wipe me out? Probably yes. So maybe I won't even get to uh, do some high-end hobby tomorrow. When I say high-end hobby, what I mean by that is um, upbeat, energetic, as, as energised as I can be, considering. But yeah, anyway, make sure you've got some coffee, tea, water, whatever you like to refresh yourself whilst you're hobbying. Uh, get your glues, brushes, models, paints, whatever you need. Get to the bench and we're going to get some... We're going to talk about some stuff. Okay, so here we are. Um, so these, ah, these have been varnished. So I can see straight away they're, uh, they're pretty much, they're done to a stage where I could pack them away and think, right, well, I, if I want them for a, an RPG or use them, they're really, really basic standard, nothing exciting about them. But I do, I am thinking with the computer screens, I might want to put a little couple bits of code on the screen. Them to one side. The drinks machine, I might want to add something to. But again, we'll put that to one side. This refrigerator thing, vendor, whatever it is, refrigerated food vending machine. Just what it looks like coming from a canteen so that one's done as far as i want it to be it's it's dirty on the front it's grimy it's designed to be on an industrial spaceship that's been around for a long time i want to get these guys done and i want to get this guy done so i can glue him onto his base i've got to do some highlights on his jacket so oh and i've also got this big piece of terrain here which i want to get done so 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 to highlight his jacket so we need some greys for that because he's got a black jacket on I'll just shake that over i need to know what i'm not sure i think I think I'm looking for, there we go. Ashen grey. Okay, we'll try that. I've got my coffee. Here yeah, in my side mug. Now, I don't know how to go about this because there's something I want to discuss with you guys. And, um, but I don't want to upset anybody or cause any offence or anything and, and for those of you that know me you know 
I am not the sort of person that, that you know, lives to cause people offence or upset anybody. You know that, right? I was, uh, I was watching a, a video the other day, uh, last night actually, and uh, now there's going to be a word and now I want to prefix this by saying I mean no offence I, I have no desire to offend anybody um, that's the absolute honest truth I don't offend anybody you know I, that's the last thing on my mind so I'm just uh, sticking up some ash and grey here I'm going to put it on I actually need to find, that's a good brush, I need to find a brush that I can, yeah, brush that I can dig it out of the pot with and water it down with, etc. It's quite exciting because uh, I'm going to be working on an Imperial Knight soon, possibly as early as tomorrow, possibly. Anyway, so, so I'm watching YouTube and, uh, and I'm watching a, a video and it's discussing, well, I may as well tell you, right? It's, uh, I'm not going to mention any names, of course. Why would I do that? That's just nuts. I'm talking about uh, the role-playing game, Scarlet Heroes, okay? And... Um, The person talking about it, 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 the setting is like a, it's a faux Asian setting. Um, uh, these might not be the exact words, but he said um, it's a faux Asian setting, fair enough, which it, it, it is. Years gone by might have been described as, um, as having an oriental flavor. Okay, so, right, so bear in mind, we're not talking about people, or a person, or persons. We're talking about, well, in my mind, we're talking about a culture. Okay. And, uh, little did I know the word oriental is deemed offensive um, by some. Um, now, I... Well, first of all, I, as we were talking about a... a theme and flavour of a role-playing game, I wasn't sure what he meant by his statement of uh, he said thankfully that's not no, no longer the case so it would have been described as oriental but years gone by but thankfully that's no longer the case and i was genuinely like mm, what's going on so i i put a, a message on saying um surely oriental means relating to or originating from the orient i'm confused to which i got a quiet at first glance, possibly a patronising response. <laughs> it's okay. Nothing a little education can't fix. I was like, what? what's going on? So I, I looked into it. And it does indeed seem that in certain instances, the word oriental can be deemed offensive. Although that's not one of them. Like the noun or adjective oriental... <sighs> can be deemed offensive in, in one way if describing persons if you describe a person as that but, but not a place or uh, object I mean to set the, to, to clear things up there are many um, like Chinese takeaways around where I live using that word. I mean, there's one called Oriental Express, there's, there's one called, um, what was it, Oriental Delight, Delight, is it? I can't remember now. But there's several using that word. 
anyway, I was genuinely un, unaware of it. So, so naturally, I went back and said, uh, oh, m my mistake. I, I genuinely had no idea. And I, d I don't know whether they believe me or not. I, I found it a bit upsetting in, in one regard. Because I, I, I have no desire to upset anybody. I certainly don't. No way. That is the last thing on my mind. Um, you know, uh, but I also found it upsetting in terms of, because you see, I, I, I used to be a student of English language when I was younger. When I went to university, I studied English language and I, I should know better than anybody really language evolves. English language evolves more than any other language. And so, yeah, but usually it evolves in the sense of adding words to a language, not taking away. So, so I, I kind of had a bit of a cancel culture alarm bells going off in my brain because I, 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 I really, I, I researched it. And I think it stems back from the Obama um, presidency. He kind of uh, categorized it as being you know, a, an offensive term for people or originating or having a background in uh, that, that sort of Eastern culture. But you see, to me, I've never ever thought of the word oriental as offensive and i've certainly never meant it that way and i would like to say here and now for the record if i've ever mentioned it in the past possibly uh, when i was doing years ago with my games of ronin and stuff if i ever offended anybody i sincerely and humbly apologize and beg your forgiveness. I, I, I really do. Um, to me, the word itself, and I can say oriental because I'm not using it in conjunction with any person or even a place or a thing which apparently doesn't count. But to me, the word oriental conjures up deep mysticism and beauty of a culture which is... I don't know, very m magical to me. And, and I've always found it a very nice word. I mean, phonetically, it's a lovely, beautiful word. Um, but I, I'm not arguing for the case that it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be offensive. Uh, I'm merely saying it, it's a beautiful sounding word. Um, but of course, you know, I'll be, I'll be very much more aware of myself when when using that language uh, see what what upsets me is not knowing i can't keep up with words these days it's like trying to keep up with the uh, the rules of warhammer sometimes it's like ugh, now now it's changed again the rules have changed again i don't understand i you know i'm an old man now so you're gonna have to give me some leeway here plus i got an adult brain you know that <laughs> you guys know but you also know I mean absolutely zero offence. And I I certainly wouldn't dream of it. I have great, as you know from, uh, you know anything about me and my background, I have great respect for uh, the culture of the Far East. Great, huge respect for it. Uh, you know, I think they're... A fascinating, beautiful, and wonderful culture. So you know, like I say, my apologies. If if the person who, who it was the guy's channel, you know, you know, if you're watching, you know who you are. Please, you know, forgive my ignorance, and um, perhaps you know, let's just move on, shall we? Um, you know, my, my mistake, it really was my mistake. I hold my hand up. You know, I'm sorry. But uh, I, it, I found it interesting because 
when I was doing my research on it, you know, I was because I was like flabbergasted over it. Really, that's what, that's what caused me to research it. I, think, well, I can't believe this. You know, it, it would seem. I, I, I mean, I didn't come across any. Uh, I don't even know how. To, I don't even know how to refer to them now. People of Asian descent from the from that uh, part of the world. Uh, is that a way? Can I describe you as that? Um, I didn't come across any who found it the term offensive. In fact, there was one uh, a female uh, Asian lady who was say who who said, "I do not find it offensive." And she said. Uh, there are many words that I do find offensive and our people would find offensive. You, you know, the words people, you know, use to, to in a derogatory and insulting manner for people of that uh, ilk. I don't know, you know, I'm, try, I'm trying to tread as carefully as I can here. Um, but Oriental is not in that verbal canon, so... Yeah, like I say, all I can say is, look, you know, apologies, I am sorry. And this guy's looking all right now. He's looking quite good. I don't know if you can see him there. For sci-fi role-playing, he's going to be awesome. So I'm going to let him dry. I'm thinking... No, I need to sort his the hilt of his sword out a bit better. There, I'll leave the top black but I'm going to do um, I'm going to do the handle brown but a lighter brown yeah lighter brown talon sand no 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 uh, x388 death claw brown yes yeah, so that's that. I just wanted to get that off my chest, out, out of the way, because it put a bit of a, a downer on my spirits yesterday. It, yeah, it, it, it lowered my vibration a bit. You know, the thought of, you know, someone perceiving me as a, some Neanderthal from, Neanderthal from the, the Dark Ages, uneducated, you know, whatever. I mean, I mean, I live in Plymouth. I come from Plymouth. People refer to us as Plymovians, and sometimes they do that in a derogatory manner because of um, Plymovians typically have a well, a certain accent, not one I share. I hasten to add, but they have a certain accent which some people find annoying. That Plymovian accent. But anyway, yeah. So. Yeah, so get got that out of the way. So that's good. Uh, and that said, you know, it's good to move on. You know, like I say, uh, you know, I'm not an offensive person. That that is not me. That is not me. I'm not that guy. So. Moving on, <laughs> talk about some other stuff. I'll talk about Reacher, the TV series. Oh man, what a great TV series that is! Reacher is fantastic, it really is. Now, if you've seen the movie Reacher with Tom Cruise and you're a fan of the book, I can understand why you don't. You don't have my high hopes. You, you're not sharing my enthusiasm here. Now, for those of you, I mean, Tom Cruise, he played Jack Reacher in those movies. Now, I don't want to, <laughs> don't want to offend anybody else. <laughs> uh, for some, um, Tom Cruise can be a bit of a polarizing actor. Um, you either, I think he's, you know, I think you love him or hate him in a lot of cases. And if you, if never read the books i think he did an all right job in the movie he certainly had the attitude of jack reacher but the problem that the fans of the books had and there's a lot of them was 
I'm just waiting for that to dry, by the way. So pop that to one side, and then I got something. Well, yeah, I got something rather cool to to, to start. Was that uh, the character Jack Reacher is six foot five, and Tom Cruise is what is he about five six, five five, five six, something like that. He's very short, and it's like, uh, no, that's not Jack Reacher. <laughs> Now, the guy they've got playing him in the series, I think he's, was it Alan Richman? I think he's 6'3", so he's much more believable. Uh, he's built, he's built like a, like a, I don't know what to say, I don't know what to say. He, he, he's, he's full of muscle, and he, he has a very imposing and intimidating presence. He's built well, let's just say that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's he is absolutely just, you know, he's smashing the role. It's just brilliant. He's doing a, an amazing job. And he totally brings it to the performance. So if you've not seen Reacher, I thoroughly recommend, that, or highly, I should say, recommend that you go and check it out. Check it out. Out because they've commissioned a season two after only three episodes. They commissioned a season two. I mean, all the episodes are out. I think it's, I don't know if it's Disney Plus or Netflix or something. I think it's Disney Plus. Uh, it's on there anyway. Right, here's another interesting one. Crashed Dreadnought. A piece of 3D printed terrain I purchased from eBay. Crashed Dreadnought. I was going to do this as Imperial Fist as well, but I'm thinking... Ultramarines, yeah, you know, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I want to do it as an Ultramarines Dreadnought. Now, this means I've got to go and find my Ultramarines somewhere. And where would I where would where would I keep them? That's the thing. That's the thing. Ah there they are. Ultra Marines. Okay. Now I just digging out the um Dreadnought I have for them. Yeah, because uh, there. Uh, now I do have one for Dark Angel somewhere. And I do have one for Blood Angels too somewhere. Uh -huh. Right, with it now. <laughs> so, yeah, which one is it most like? Now, <sighs> the weapon, Got a bit of a plasma weapon going on. Looks more. Well, they could have changed it, of course, but the back, the, the exhaust stack, I think it's the same as this one, or could it be this one? No. I think. I think I'm going to make him Blood Angels. Okay. Uh, the Furioso Dreadnought. Now. A crashed Furioso Dreadnought. Uh, yeah, it's, I think he's similar. Because his arm could have been swapped out. I think that's fair. I think that's fair.
Yeah, he's not the ultramarine. Does. I need to get a, a dreadnought for my imperial fists. Right, so what I'm going to do... I am going to... Now, corn red is deep red, isn't it? Uh, we got here burnt red. We could use that, I suppose. The fist on red will be what I work up towards. And I've got word bearers red. Right, I think that's enough to be getting on with. Okay. Let's shake these up a bit. <laughs> So yeah, Reacher, very interesting. See, Burnt Red by Vallejo is, eh, it's not a million miles away from Word Bearer's Red. Which is a very, a very brown sort of red. Yeah. I think that's what I'm going to do. Let me pop a little bit of burnt red onto the palette here. Yeah, I think that's a bit more redder red. I think word bearer's red is the one I'm going to go with. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to bin that uh, palette, and I'm going to get a new one. There we go, like so. How's that? 27 minutes in. Right. Right, so. Now for the grim dark. Do I want to go? Do you know, this is, this is a bit infuriating. <laughs> Do I want to go XP88 for that? I think I'd be better off with a darker brown. Sort of... Hmm. Doombill brown. It seems like a lighter brown than word bearer's red. <laughs> As does Mournfang Brown. We're looking for Rhinox Hide, I think, might be the way to go. Rhinox Hide. Now, I might not need a palette after all. Do the Deathclaw Brown. Right, what I've got to do is yes i think this sort of makeup brush will be the one stippling effect that's how it's going to be right rhinox hide so i'm shaking up <laughs> rhinox hide that's how i'm going to do it Kind of like dry brushing, in in that you need to get the majority of the paint off. Off of your brush. But uh, yeah, yeah, so I got my interview tomorrow. I'm excited, I am nervous, yes, but I am excited too, and I think that's a good thing, it's a good thing the the lady that I dread being on my interview panel every time, she seems to come up, it's not on this one, uh, and I thank God for that. <laughs>
So I don't think I would have stood a chance had she been. That sounds terrible, but uh, yeah, I, I just don't think she likes me. <laughs> I, I try to be liked, but you know, not everybody is everybody's cup of tea, are they? So as you can see, I'm just dabbing this on here. Uh. Yeah, so this is going to be because if I've got dreadnoughts like this. I'm playing. They get blown up or destroyed. I can just replace them with a this sort of crashed marker. I mean, they can be used as you know terrain uh, objective markers too. Yeah, of course they can. But uh, you know, in this instance, not the case. And I can I can sort of make up a lot of this as I go because this is an arm that isn't on this one. This sort of uh, giant sort of plasma type gun here. So Rhinox hide is my first grim dark uh, blood angel effect i suppose for the crash dreadnought it's a recipe i'm going to be trying out so yeah so yeah so let me know what you guys are working on so that i can get that out of the way i'm sorry i i started this uh this on the bench i was a bit downhearted you know, it's just, uh, but I find these sort of cathartic sessions very helpful. You help lift my spirits. Just talking about it, you know, and, uh, you know, we live in a, a world and society now. You just got to be, you just got to be aware of, you know, other people other people's feelings and not inadvertently upsetting anybody it's gonna happen though it's gonna happen whether you no matter how hard you try not to it's gonna happen but you just gotta keep trying not to and you know when it does happen say look I'm sorry I didn't I meant no offense I really didn't the top of uh, that one though looks a little bit like the Dark Angel one that said But that's all right. That's okay. Does look a bit like it though. I could do Dark Angel, but I'm not. I'm going to do. I'm going to do. I'm going with the uh, Blood Angel because I've decided I want to try out that particular. Um, recipe for for them so you know that's how it's going to be but uh, yeah let me know what you're working on because uh, yeah, I like to read about that right I'm going to pop the dreadnoughts to one side I haven't got to worry about them cluttering up my desk because I'll just pack them away afterwards not a problem Okay, I need white. Let's go with Model Air White by Vallejo. Just want to get some digits or numbers or whatever it may be 
on these computer screens. There you go, just not very good. It's just, it's just something to represent something. <laughs> Same there. That's what I wanted to do. That's all I wanted to do for that. That is it. So let's raise our vibrations. And so we're waiting for this to dry. So I'm gonna get another piece of this done, perhaps, or, or, get off my guy here, put a wash on the handle. A wash on the handle, which is gonna be an I got surf shade. Awesome. Oh, I've been trying to get hold of some um, more D and D books as well for future campaigns. I love. I just love books. You know, that's just me. Right, when that's dry, I'm varnishing him. Uh, I think he's good enough for. An avatar in a role playing game. What's so else? That done. Still got this guy here. I don't. I don't know where I want to go with this one. I think he's pretty much done. Uh, maybe some highlights. Could look at pink, I suppose. Pink horror, Emperor's Children. I think Emperor's Children would be quite um, interesting. Again, we could use a, a sort of stippling effect. The Emperor's Children is quite a bright pink. It's just in certain areas. Like to put it down on the tendrils there. If you can get enough paint off the brush, you're in good shape. I feel. I feel so. There we go. <laughs> Going back to that. Um, whole thing about uh, um, you know not wanting to cause offence <laughs> I'm thinking maybe it's uh, more prevalent in America you know the for that particular situation and just uh, folks such as myself have just never come across that before <laughs> yeah, so it's very bizarre Bizarre. It is interesting as well, though, from a, a language standpoint, how language evolves, changes over time. You know, I just hope we don't end up like, uh, you know, 1984, where all words are pretty much, you know, it's changed into new speak. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be people saying, no, nah, never happened, but eh, you can't say never, say never. Right. 
I think I'm done with him too. So when he drives, he's going to be varnished. Oh, we're doing good here. All right, my two monk type characters. I'd like to do some um, rope or something. Yeah, go old school. Let's go old school. Let's do a shabby bone rope. Yeah, let's do that. That's real old school. Still looking for that miniature I was talking about back along. I've reached out to people. I haven't heard anything back yet. You know, I really. I would like to get a hold of it. It would be awesome if I could. Anything is possible. I have not given up hope. For those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, I've been after this uh, miniature of a cleric, old school, like a monk type cleric, kind of like this, but say he's got his hands behind his back and he's holding a big, massive club. He's obviously going to batter his opponent with, you know, or his unsuspecting victim. I don't know, he could be a thief or something, you know, in disguise. So. Who knows, whatever it may be. <laughs> it's a very fun humour from the time, I, I find. So, uh, just checking the time a moment. Ah, it's not even 11 o'clock yet. That's good. So I know my wife will be going to lunch at around about half past 11. So I will, I will join her for that. Mm-hmm. Classic, classic rope around the midsection. Yeah, has he got any? Yeah, he has a bit. This one I f is, has a feel of a more modern miniature. Pewter, but like metal, but um, does have the feel of a more modern miniature. The details a lot sharper for starters. Yeah, we have to put a bit of agrax shade on his face actually. Which we'll be needing for the ropes anyways. Bit of coffee time. So yeah. Oh by the way, uh, you might not have seen but I'll put it up anyway. Um, P and Q birthday edition. You know, it's it's almost a year since the P and Q fiftieth birthday edition last time round. My goodness, where does that time go? Where? I ask you. <laughs> where does it go? Goes into the ether. I'm just finishing off my coffee here. Actually, I'm gonna hold off on that. Get back to here. I'm going to go to Word Bearers Red. Mm. Word Bearers Red. It's a very uh, brown looking red, but it is a red nevertheless. So, we 
that in mind. We're still playing the Dreadnought. Doobie doobie doo, we do we do, we do we do. You know, I love, I love grim dark painting. Just love it. Well, bear is red. It's essentially a brown, but uh, you know, you could argue that case. So anyway, um, I do have some other hobby sort of news, um, but I'm going to leave that um, kind of, ex it, it is exciting, it's kind of not relevant right now, there's something that's definitely going to happen in the future, I'll probably talk about it in a, possibly the next episode of Painting with Patrons, which if you don't know is the Paint Along series or a paint along series that I do for my patrons. There's another series now. Um, I don't know what it's called yet. Painting with Patrons Plus or Painting with Pete. I don't know. But there's an hour and a half uh, version in there as well. So we're going to have hour versions and hour and a half versions. It's all quite exciting. Quite exciting stuff. So. All right, so that's that. Excellent. Yes, yeah, so I've got stuff to talk about, hobby. I certainly do. Well, let's clean my brush out again. There's just an ordinary household bar of soap. Cleans my brushes splendidly. Yes, does a magnificent job of cleaning my brushes. I have to get some more of these um, makeup brushes. They're very good, particularly for grim dark. I'm gonna get another piece of kitchen towel because that one's a bit manky. So yeah, so uh, there you go. All right, so where am I going now? Now I think it's time I can wash. Wash the rope. I wonder if I'll get any posts today, who knows? I am expecting quite a few things post-wise, but uh, yeah, you never can tell. It's strange because sometimes you can be expecting loads from the mail and then have days we don't get any. It's really bizarre. There's basins doing that. Uh, yeah, other than that, he's looking good, I think. Might put some flock on his base. Hmm. Varnish them up first. I think you need to highlight this one. Yeah, some sort of highlight. It's tricky to know what color. Talon Sand. Yes, Talon Sand. Uh, right, so that's that, that's that, that's that. I think I'm going to... I'm going to varnish him. Yeah, he's not a particularly great paint job, but he's very worthwhile. 
There we go. I've got more from this sort of series to do uh, this type of miniature. I think these are 3D printed. Um, the resin, anyway. Yeah, the resin miniatures. And they're 32 mil. They're not 28 mil. Because these are going to be for solo role playing. So I want them that little bit bigger. Just to stand out that little bit more in case. In case I should happen to film it. How can you film solo role playing? I hear you ask. Well, you just have to wait and see. Yeah. So that's done. That is done. For this guy. Just gonna varnish the top. Not that I'm expecting. I'm not expecting uh, to be him to be picked up much by that. And then he's done. Wow, we're getting stuff done. Now the dead ringer, which is. That guy with the bells on the top of his head. <laughs> it's going to be mostly used, I think, Call of Cthulhu type stuff. Because he's a weird miniature. Very weird. Wow, we are killing it. We are absolutely killing it. What time scale have we got here? 56 minutes. Well, we're around about time to end now, I think. So, yeah, let me know what you're working on. And let me know how your projects are behaving. Um, yeah, thank you for listening to me. It's, it's been a very therapeutic session for me, this, actually. I need to get my head in the game. Let me just zoom out. Glass is off. There we are. Yeah, I need to get my head in the game for the interview tomorrow. Big interview. I can't help but put pressure on myself. Could be life changing if I get this job. Oh, I need it. I, I want it so much. I, I can do it. I can do the job. That's the thing. I know I can do the job. I've just got to show them. Yes, I can do this job. Yes, I'm better than you other candidates. Take me on. <laughs> I would fit in well. I'm a, I'm a good, I'm a good guy. Despite all, uh, despite all uh, opinions to the contrary, I'm a funny guy. I can be. So yeah. So uh, big fingers crossed for tomorrow. I'm hoping it goes well. And, uh, whew, yeah, <laughs> but um, thanks ever so much for painting along with me. Uh, you know, it's been a bit of a weird one, isn't this? I don't, I don't even know what to call it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, no offense or something. I don't know, we'll see. Might even uh, download this before I come back to do more videos, some more awesome videos for you. Or more videos for you awesome people. Keep painting, keep modelling, uh, keep your chin up, keep your spirits up. And, uh, you know, remember guys, all brushes lead to war. There's going to be some names going up at the end. Uh, my patrons, if you want to be a patron, check it out. You will have access to exclusive videos. That there is, there is more coming. I promise you in Patreon, in the Patreon site, and it's all good. It's exciting. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's nice. I, I think it's worthwhile. So, if you want to help support me in this channel, keep the lights on and everything else, all that other good stuff, then uh, just check it out. But if if you don't fancy that, then that, could you just give it a, this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Either way, it's fine. Uh, share if you like it, though. Share it around. And I'll see you guys 
on another video. So bye for now. Bye bye.